We've done it. We have finally done it. We have reached 1 million subscribers on the Also Trader YouTube channel. Thank you so much. We're a million strong. Can you believe that? The Also Trader army, the trader gang is a million deep and we couldn't have done it without you guys watching and clicking that subscribe button. Thank you so much. I also want to take a quick moment to thank my team, every single person that works behind the scenes to create these incredible videos that go out on the channel. Thank you so much. Okay, now with that said, we do have a 1 million video special planned but the numbers have been going up so quickly that we haven't been able to get that out in time. And we wanted to mark the milestone that as soon as we hit a million, we got a video out for you guys, and this is it. So what I decided we should do is that we should make an Ask Me Anything. So I put out a community post asking you guys to ask me whatever is on your minds, and that's what this video is all about. So without further ado, let's get into it. Probably gonna regret this, but okay, first question from Abood MKM. Hi Rory, was there a press car or any car in general that you bonded with so much that you regret selling it or handing it back? Um, I really like the Ferrari 812 Superfast. That was one car that I really didn't wanna give back. But generally speaking, honestly, when I'm done with a car and we've successfully shot it and it gets picked up, my main feeling is relief that everything's gone right, that the whole plan has gone without a hitch, if it goes without a hitch. Good question though. All right, next question is from Coxie847 who says, I think the F87 M2 is the finest M car or otherwise that BMW have made. What do you think? I think it's good. So the old generation M2 was a fantastic car, especially the M2 CS. That's one of my favorites, but I think the best ever M car for me has to be the M5 CS. The CS is top notch for me, and the M5 is an example of BMW at the absolute pinnacle, the ultimate driving machine. The M2 is very decent though as well. Okay, next up is from HNL255. What would you say is the golden era of cars around the world? I would say kind of like late 2000s, 2010s, up towards now-ish. That's for me the golden age of cars because that's when you started to get like really good performance in absolutely everything. You got family cars that can out accelerate performance cars. You got performance cars with ridiculous numbers and also driver aids. So in the past, if you had a supercar and you didn't have to drive it, it would kill you. But with these modern cars, you can actually get in them and enjoy them on a track or anywhere else without them being too spiteful. And we've also got some cool electric cars as well. We never really saw that in the past. So things like the Rimatch, the Tesla Model S Plaid, all of that stuff is starting to, to come to a point where I think we're near peak automobile right now with the mix that we've got. I think from here onwards, it might be slightly downhill, but you know, stranger things have happened, we'll see. But yeah, around sort of 2010-ish is, is my peak. Good question. Steve132D says, perfect sunny day on a country road, motorcycle or car? I'm going car, drop top. Can't beat a convertible on a sunny day. Bikes are good, they're good fun, but you gotta put all the leather on, and then on a hot sunny day with all the leather on, it's, yeah, it's a bit sticky in there. So I'm gonna go car, convertible. Dan and the boys says, Rory, have you ever had road rage and chased someone in a fast review car? No. I'm quite chilled actually, but I have chased someone in my own car. Let that be a lesson to all of you. Don't beep at me on the street, please. Uh, Devon Mothersville says, have you ever crashed a vehicle during a review or if not had a close shave? I've had loads of close shaves, buddy. Me and Alex were in a Lamborghini and um, this happened. <laughs> Hell. I think we got away with it. Let's have a quick look. Rory, I see no damage. But yeah, you can't foresee every single eventuality. Um, so sometimes things go wrong. Next question is from N Barrett. He says, or she says, Rory, like most of us, if you had to buy a car and drive it for the next 10 years, what would it be? If I was gonna get a family car, I'd get a Range Rover. If it's gonna be a sports car, I'd get a 911 uh, 992. So there's your answer for that. If you were asked to revive Top Gear and could do anything you want with the format, how would you change it 
and who would be your co-presenters. I'm pretty sure they wouldn't give me total freedom because that's not how the BBC works. <laughs> so I think the answer to that is I wouldn't take on that challenge because we've seen what happens when new presenters join Top Gear. It's a bumpy ride. Let it burn. Next question. Get Trapped says, hello Rory, which discontinued car from the past would you love to be redesigned into a modern car? E.g. new Countach. Um, BMW CSL and I would also like to bring back the Ford Model T, right? So the OG from back in the day, bring it back. Let's have a Ford Model T for the modern age and see what that looks like. Millibuy says, which car made you absolutely love it while simultaneously frustrating you to no end? A true love-hate relationship. I'm gonna go with the Alfa Romeo 4C. Brilliant car to look at. So, so, so sexy. Absolutely awful to drive. Next question, Your says, can you post videos more often? I know it's a lot of work, but you all are the best on YouTube. Thank you. No, probably not. <laughs> it's a kind of quality over quantity thing over here. That's what we're trying to do. Uh, Daniel Burt says, hi Rory, best driver's car for under three grand that isn't a convertible. What's wrong with convertibles? Love drop tops. I'd go uh, Golf GTI Mark IV or Mark V. Rich says, as a former TG presenter, your thoughts on how YouTube has trans... This cops are after me. As a former TG presenter, your thoughts on how YouTube has transformed the automotive journalism landscape and serves as a point of access for new and emerging talent, e.g. Auto Alex. Is Alex really as short as he appears on camera? Yeah, he is. He's even shorter, actually. Uh, YouTube's democratized the whole process of getting online, basically. When I first started, this was before YouTube. I'm that old, believe it or not. Um, you couldn't get in online video unless you were on television in some way. But with the advent of YouTube, nowadays, you can get online with a mobile phone. All you gotta do is press record, upload it, and you can become a YouTube star with a lot of hard work and dedication as well. And if you have hard work and dedication and a bit of talent, what you can do is create some really, really high quality stuff. And there's some incredible creators out there that I think make better and better looking and better quality content than some of the OGs. And I am talking about Top Gear and I am talking about us. <laughs> All right, next question is uh, Bilak. Uh, Bilak says, what did you want to be when you grew up and could you see yourself ever changing career? I wanted to write for a magazine, specifically Nintendo official magazine and also Max Power. I never managed to work for either of them, but I, um, I did write for the biggest computer magazine in the country because I was also big into tech and becoming a journalist in tech allowed me to become a journalist in cars when I decided to transition, when I found out I could transition. Andrew Wheeler says, I have no questions, just keep up the good reviews, Rory, tip top. Salute, Andrew, love your work. Um, okay, what cars would you combine to make your perfect car? Front, side, rear, engine, exhaust sound, and interior, and what would the name of the car be? That's a great question. I'd go Ford GT at the back, Aventador at the side, LaFerrari at the front. The engine um, would be out of a Bugatti. And for sound, I'd probably go the sound of a Clive Sutton Mustang 850 GT, I think they call it. That will make your ears bleed. And I would call it something like the um, uh, Laventador GT Plus. It would be ugly and unbuildable, but it would be amazing. Next question is from MDU30. I know this is a car review channel, but have you ever thought of making a car challenge like a Top Gear special? Dude, 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 great idea. Check out our South Africa special because we did uh, a Top Gear-like special in Johannesburg. I think you'll like it. Watch it and let me know what you think. Okay, um, Nathan B says, what's been your favorite auto trader video to film? That one, the South Africa special, because I got to run over Alex. Next question is from Juan Pompey 227 who says, I've been a big fan of your work. Two small questions. Uh, would you ever collaborate with Clarkson, May or Hammond since neither of you work for the BBC? If not, would you collaborate more with any car YouTubers or automotive journalists here stateside? I would work with James May. I'd love to work with James May, I think he's cool. I work with uh, Throttle House. I think the guys from Straight Pipes are really cool. Jason Kamisa, I'd like to work with as well. He's dope, I like him. Next one's from Zenin7. How was your experience driving your first ever hypercar? Um, do you know what? I think hypercars aren't as scary as people think, genuinely. 
you get big power figures, obviously, but generally they tend not to make those peak figures at low RPM. And by that, I mean, if you're driving around at low speed, they're not making 2000 horsepower doing 30 miles an hour because that would be insane. Um, so what tends to happen is you accelerate, get to about 160 and then you get the big power figures. So I just think going in a straight line really quickly isn't that fun. I mean, it's, it's, it's potentially fun, but you probably get quite bored of it after a while. Where you get the most fun is going really fast around corners and it's not hypercars that do it the best. It's it's supercars or sports cars. And especially if you're driving a car with downforce like the McLaren Senna, because that's when you're cornering at ridiculous speeds and you feel that G-force. Yeah, hypercars, overrated, sports cars and supercars, probably a lot more fun actually. Joe Bloggs, 3629 says, where did it all start for you and who was your inspiration? Uh, reading magazines really, and for cars, watching Top Gear, and then I became a Top Gear presenter. That's quite mad, isn't it? The Gaming Bros HD says, if you could go back in time and give advice to your younger self, what would that be and why? By the way, love the channel. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't give myself any advice to be honest with you. You know why? Because I think it would spoil the surprise. I think it would spoil the journey. And it might have also meant that I took my eye off the ball. Because if you know you're gonna achieve something, maybe you won't work quite as hard to achieve it. This one's from DGO2. He says, do you ride other vehicles, motorcycle, boats, plane? Um, yeah, I got a power boat license, actually. And I also have a car license, as you know, but also a bike license. What's the best one? Mm, uh, bikes are really fun. Cars are cool. I like them all. Anything with an engine, mate, to be honest with you. Thanks for the question. This one's from Senator Groove. 4728, do you think Lotus is losing its core identity? Uh, no, I think they're trying to survive, to be honest with you. No one's buying Lotus sports cars, so they need to make cars that people actually want to buy. I think you guys who moan about Lotus, no offense, um, just go out and buy their products. Not their used cars, by the way, buy the new ones because that's where they make their money. If you're not doing it, and very few people are, then how can they survive? They have to make these electrified cars and these big SUVs in order to stay afloat. So yeah, I don't think they're losing their core identity. They're just doing what they gotta do. This one's from With Cars 909 says, what is one car body style that you just love and one that you hate? I uh, love sports cars, hate MPVs, and sometimes estates as well. Performance estates, love them, but normal boring estates, nah, not really, not really up for it. How would you compare your presenting job on Top Gear to your now presenting on Auto Trader? trader gang all day buddy uh, AT is also kind of more authentic I can connect with you guys and give you a truer version of myself than I could on Top Gear so um yeah also trader all day long uh, Frank Z says what was it like taking part in the destruction of the biggest TV show ever burn yeah but you, you're forgetting something the Simpsons is still going you dummy okay Manu Life says um, best and worst car you've owned Mustang GT is the best. Worst is a Yugo Zastava. Wasn't very good. Um, Mark says, favorite car you've ever driven? 911 GT3 RS, brilliant car. Or, or, no, 911 GT3 RS. Philip says, do you honestly think that when everything goes electric, the EVs can be as good as petrol power cars? Yeah, some will be better um, and some will not be as good. It just depends on, on the car. Like family cars would be better, sports cars maybe not as good. Um, this one is from Matthias Maximus. In your opinion, who's the most underrated YouTuber who could do with a shout out? Uh, Auto Alex, he's really struggling on his channel right now. So uh, go and subscribe to him. Cameron says, you have one tank of fuel left in the world. What car are you taking for one final run? GT3 RS or 750S or McLaren Elva? That's two McLarens. They do, they do brilliant driver's cars, they really are. Um, Funky Homo Sapien says, is your wife as good at driving as you are? <laughs> no, <laughs> absolutely not. But I have done a video with with, with her actually, and she's she's a pretty good reviewer. She's actually, she knows she knows what she wants. What do you, what do you think of the car? It's fine. <laughs> it's nice. 
It's fine. The official verdict on the Bentayga. DTS says, hi Rory, it frustrates me when I hear car manufacturers call EVs environmentally friendly when they're significantly more CO2 intensive to produce and have major challenges around recycling. What's your honest take on this and do you think the industry needs to be more open about this? Here's the thing. I think most people, when they moan about electric cars, what they complain about is that EVs are not perfectly clean but I don't think there are many people in the world who are really making that claim. Certainly not the manufacturers. The manufacturers are claiming, I think, that they're more sustainable and they're slightly better for the environment, but no one is saying that they are the perfect solution. No car is ever gonna be perfectly green. What these things are is they're a slight improvement on what we have currently, and we need to keep constantly improving. So don't look at it like, it's not perfect, so it's rubbish. Look at it like, it's a bit better. Let's see where we can take that. Next question, top five best engines ever made. I'm gonna go with Porsche flat six, uh, GM LS small block, um, mm, 2JZ, Jaguar AJ V8, and um, the Tesla Model S plaid motor as well. <laughs> those, are my, those are my top five, I think that's five. Can an electric car, says Sandeep, realistically be a full replacement for ICE for a family of four doing eight to 10,000 miles a year? Uh, yeah, I run a Tesla Model Y and I've got a family of five and it, uh, it works all right actually, so yes. Brian is wrong, says, if one of your children said they were gonna be a full-time YouTuber or TikToker, what would your response be? YouTuber, I'll allow, TikToker, no. That stuff rots your brain. Kirky says, what's your favorite donut? Uh, OG Krispy Kreme. Heat it up in the microwave though for about five seconds. That is, oh, perfection. Doug the Dynamo, how long can you hold your breath for? Two minutes, um, <laughs> I think. <laughs> Should I do it now? <laughs> nah. Uh, Pastronomer says, I know you're a plane geek, so rather than the boring top three cars, what are your top three airplanes? I'm gonna go with uh, A380, Airbus A380, a Lockheed SR71, and an F22 Raptor. Those are my, mm, I love those planes. Love those. A, I, I could talk for hours about planes. Maybe I should, I should start a plane channel. All right, DNA1238 says, when and where did you learn to drive? Like really drive. Uh, Mario Kart and Sega Rally. Torben says, front engine or mid engine sports car? Front. What was it like working on Top Gear, says Dr. Necky. There's a video, I'm gonna link to it in the description box. So you can watch what it was like. I explain it in there. Which car makes you go bumberclart? Model S plaid. <laughs> um, Exia says, where can I buy blinker fluid? I'll sell you some, no problem. Kyle Spencer says, do you still stand by your opinion that you can keep your Ferraris and your Lamborghinis because you're taking the Focus RS? No, give me a Lambo. Mr. Mando says, do you agree with children mining lithium for EVs? No, I don't. Why would I agree with that? Um, if that's the dig at electric cars, you should also ask me whether I agree with the 1200 children dying every year prematurely from dodgy exhaust emissions and, and air pollution because you'll get the same answer to be honest with you. Simon Pyman says twirl or flake, flake all day. Um, will you marry me? Yes. Do you love me? Yes. Uh, boxes or briefs? This is getting weird now. Come on guys. I said ask me anything but seriously. Please can you empty the dishwasher, get the washing out the tumble dryer and do the hoovering? Yes dearest. Um, and on that note, I should probably end this, but there's one more question. Uh, this is from Joshua who says, how are you actually doing? Thank you, Joshua. Thanks for asking how I'm actually doing. The answer to that is I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing amazing because a million of you guys have subscribed to the channel. So thank you once again. I love you all to bits. Keep watching the channel. We are going from strength to strength. We've got some incredible features lined up for 2024. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for being part of this journey. Um, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.